me know if you can hear if you can hear me, although we cannot hear you. And Amy, thank you for that. At least I know you can hear me. And Caitlin, the same. Okay, I'll keep that up. Okay, so this is a strange one day today. Well, not strange as such, but um, everybody's at different points now. And uh, I've, quite a few people are either ready to go on to the final assessment or they are, um, are just about there. Anybody having issues with Max? This is something that's been coming up over the last couple of days. Is anybody having any issues with uh, basically using a Mac and then finding the candidate or contents page? Anything like that? If you can let me know. If you can't, again, if you can't, if you can't speak and hear me, just let me know in the chat. Those of you that can hear me, if you could give me an answer, that would be appreciated. Okay. So yeah, that have. Right, Aaron. Oh, I think I think I've just I think I just sorted yours because I emailed right, you back right. not that long ago, and oh, that's okay. when, that. Yeah, you can double check. And then that I think that's what that's went through as a pass. Right. Thank okay. you. Okay. No bother on that one. Anybody else having any problems using using pages? I'll I'll explain what the problem is. That the the, um, the the vast majority of Basically, colleges and universities in the UK use Microsoft Word as a standard, unless you're an art student, in which case they will use Macs, but not very often. The result being that you're you're, you're gradually going to have the, basically have these problems as we as, as we go uh, as we're going across. What I would suggest you do, if it applies to any of the rest of you, um, do what you can, but explain to me in the email when you're sending it in. That, uh, oh, incidentally, first of all, send it in as a as a, as a Microsoft do, uh, a Word document. You can do that on pages that will let you save it as a as a Word document. Don't worry about the format so much. Just get as much done as you can. Send it through to me, and then I'll see where we are from there. Okay? If there's something that I know you can't fix because you're in a Mac, I'll sort it for you. But if there's something I know you can fix, you'll get it back. Okay? Just so you know what's happening. Okay, now what I need to do is go, go around everybody individually, find out exactly where you are and if you have any questions on anything. Okay, um, I'll start with Amy. Amy, I know you can't hear me. The unmute, the unmute button is certainly not working. Um, okay, so Amy, and it basically gives you can let me know in chat, please, if you're having any problems with anything. We'll go back to that. Megan, how are you? I'm good. I'm just going into the conclusion. And that's me. I think you ha we're having any problems with anything. Are you okay with it? Everything's fine. Yeah. Okay. Listen. Um. I'm going. I'm, it's not very often I would refer you to a video that I did for another group. But to all of you, anything regarding title page all the way through to how to get your how you get your appendices in. If you, you will find a video, it's got a red cover on the YouTube, or basically on the YouTube channel, and it's, it's for admin 1A, but it's the one for this week. Now, we had problems on Tuesday regarding trying to do a full Zoom session, so I just recorded this. Okay, um, if you have a look at that, it tells you in a lot of detail how to do ex everything from start to finish, in terms of finishing it off after you've done your sections. So if anybody's got any issues on that, have a look at that video. You don't want, don't want you all have access to it. If any of you have been having, having any problems getting, uh, getting access to the videos, I've now made them public on YouTube. So if you actually just type in my name on uh, basically in the search bar in YouTube, they should come up. There's, there's more than one Alan Hanley, so be careful on it, but you'll, you'll know what the covers look like by now. Um, so if there's any, that would be an easier way for you rather than we, you know, basically try to use the code. Okay. How many of you accessed the videos when you went up last week? Me. Me. Thank you. Um, I'm glad somebody did. I know a lot more than that did because the numbers for this class were pretty good actually. I think there's been about 19 or 20 people looking at them. Hopefully you found it useful and it's certainly one way of catching up on what was done if, you, if for any reason you didn't make the class. Okay, right, Amy, you've emailed me my final report. Um, I can't remember if I'll get back to you on that, but I'll double check it. Okay, thanks for letting me know on that one. 
Okay, Morgan. Yeah, I've done mine. You said that everything was fine. Right, so you're, <laughs> you're, so you're waiting to go on to assessment three then? Yeah. Right, okay. Kamal, how are you? Yeah, I'm okay. Right, okay, I'm and where, where are you, what wise? On the appendices. You're on the appendices, okay. Mm -hmm. Are you managing it okay? Yeah, okay. okay. As I say, I'll refer you back to that video if you're having any problems. So you're nearly finished as well there. Aaron, I know where you are, mate. Okay, Caitlin, what about you? How are you? Caitlin, can you hear me? Uh, she's on recommendations if you don't have any questions. Thanks for that, Ka Thanks for that Caitlin. Okay, Neymar, I think I just emailed you back just before we started this session. Okay. That problem that you've had, I've managed, I've managed to fix it and it's been through it's been through as a pass. Okay, so you are basically so you'll be moving on to the final assessment. Um can you let me could you say something so I know that you've heard me? Right now I don't know if you heard me or not. Right, okay, yeah enough. Half star, how are you? Hafsa, how are you? Can you hear me? Let me know. Please let me know in chat if you can, if you can hear me, but I can't hear you. Okay, also uh, my mic. Right, okay, thanks, Neymar. Your mic doesn't work. Uh, did Did you hear? Did you hear what he said? Okay. Yeah, good, good. I'm glad to, glad to hear it. Okay, so you know we are, you're, you again, you're about to go into assessment three. Okay, um, you, I don't know if, you, uh, I, I don't know if you know this, but obviously the meetings that we're going to have regarding progression for next year um, are coming up pretty shortly. In fact, some of them start next week. For that reason, can I suggest please that I don't think anybody actually here it will affect Simply because there are a few students that are, have not even completed assessment one, they've got half of it done. So if you know anybody that's in that, uh, basically in that boat, can you let them, please let them know that it, would, it will benefit them more if they can at least get, get uh, assessment one completed. Okay, and um, we'll take it from there. Okay, so right, this, is where, this is where we are with everything at the moment. The only thing left for me to do is to start going over the materials for assessment three. Now assessment three has had to be changed quite a bit because of the current situation. And in terms of whether uh, exactly how that's going to pan out, I'm not quite sure. But I'll put it up and let you know. Normally, normally assessment three would be a group presentation. Now, even I know what that's going to do, that would be kind of difficult to do on Zoom. Anybody agree with me? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, particularly, particularly if you're trying to work with other students. So obviously, for that reason, I've changed the, I've changed the, the, the layout of it in terms of what you want to do. Um, there's a PowerPoint that I will attach to the email that you would normally get after the session. And, and that basically that will go through explaining what to do. It is linked to the work that you completed for assessment two and also assessment one, also part of assessment one as well. So I'll put that up in screen and we'll go through it. A lot of the a lot of the slides on this I may just skip through because of the fact it was originally set up for a group presentation. But I'll explain to you exactly what you need to do. As it stands at the moment, I'm not 100% sure whether you actually even need to set the presentation or not, but I do know you need to produce the presentation and you need and you, you need to produce um, the evidence to go with that. So I'll explain what's going on and then if there are any problems, you, uh, anything you, you're not sure of, you can let me know. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Right, yep. thank you. Right, thank you. Right. Share screen. The joys of this. There we go. So the one I'm looking for is this one. There you go. Is this great presentation? Um, but if you'll notice at the bottom, I've actually put an updated uh, updated 2020 COVID because it's slightly different. So ignore the title. It's just basically a discussion and presentation uh, tips on this. Okay. 
So to get you started on this, quite simply to complete and present a PowerPoint presentation. This is assuming that we are going ahead with the, pre the presenting of this. A decision is not being made because uh, they don't think that any of them can make up their mind on how we're going to do it. So as I say, assume at the moment you're only preparing materials for this. Everybody understand that? Yep, thank you. Um, Where can this PowerPoint be found? Is it on Moodle? This PowerPoint is one I actually amended it this morning and I will send everybody a copy of it um, with yep. the email after this, after 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 we finish this session. Okay. Okay. Right, so it's based on one of the protected characteristics under the Equality Act. Now you looked at three in a bit of detail when you did your report. You could choose one of those, that's absolutely fine. If you want to choose something different, a different one of the nine, and start from scratch, you can do that as well. It's entirely up to you. But as I say, the, the important thing is that it's based on one of the protected characteristics. It's not the effect that Brexit would, ha uh, Brexit would have on it. It's just about that characteristic itself. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. So we're not making the link between Brexit and the characteristic. It's just on that characteristic. Okay, um, using your research material, a decision must be made on how to make the, the information available. Now that means basically what I want you to do is to think very carefully about how you're going to put, basically put the information into the PowerPoint. If I get back, if, if you basically make up your PowerPoint, you send it in to me and say, Alan, here's my PowerPoint, and I'll look at it, and it's a white screen with loads and loads of writing on it, you're going to get it back because you've not put any thought into that. Okay, remember PowerPoint is a visual aid. Therefore, there must be more than just words on a PowerPoint. Okay, under normal circumstances, you would be assessed on your skills in oral presentation. You still may be, we don't know. In discussion, and then writing up documents. So as you can see, some of them would apply to the current situation. Some of them will not. Are we okay on that slide? Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be having an, an overview of presentation skills. Wouldn't do get any harm to do this anyway, just in case they suddenly, suddenly turn around and, and say we'll find out a way to do this. Okay, um, documentation for meeting. Don't worry about that so much. Okay, it's a bit uh, again, we're limited with this, so for that reason, you could do it, you actually could do a meeting over, uh, over Zoom. But in terms of doing the presentations, it would be rather difficult. Um, so don't worry about that. Just concentrate on point one, which is all of you have good presentation skills. Okay, so a lot of this you will think to yourself, oh, wait a minute, this is like the report. It is in a lot of ways, okay? So the language has got to be formal. The information has got to be accurate and coherent. Now the word coherent, if anybody's not sure, means makes sense. In other words, if you start, suddenly start quoting a load of waffle, you would get pulled up for it. Okay, the language is uh, used as appropriate for the purpose and audience. Do prepare this as if you were going to present it. And that also would come into the other because normally what would happen under normal circumstances, you would be asked questions at the end of the PowerPoint. So that's why we've got this sign here in about responses. Um, and no matter what you're doing on a, on a presentation, whether you're making it up or you're actually presenting it, don't panic. If, you can if you've got the time, and we've got plenty of time on this to do this, um, I'd rather you took the time carefully and sort of did a really good job of it. Are we okay so far? Right, I'm assuming that no news is good news and moving on to the next one. Right. Under normal circumstances, you would be asked to prepare a five minute presentation about a characteristic. Okay, so assume that is the amount of time that you the, basically that your presentation would at last for, and that's five minutes. It's amazing how much you can cover in five minutes. Okay, um, you'll be assessed for your listening, 
then we'll do that. But as well as your talking skills, that again would relate to the questions at the end. Okay, three things about presentations. Number one, plan. It's amazing how many students don't do it. Prepare. Again, if that's something you don't do well, then you're going to have problems in terms of presenting. Okay, you need to think what the presentation is about and who is aimed at. So therefore, if you look back to the information that you needed to get for your evaluation, a lot of the purposes come in the same way. Okay, so if you can see how this is linking with your previous work. Maybe not in terms of content, but certainly in terms of what you need to think about as you're doing this. Okay, planning. Ask yourself the following questions. How much would the audience already know? Can they understand all the terminology? And what is there actually going to be when I say whatever it is you're going to, well, basically whatever it is that your, your statement is going to be? The one that causes a problem sometimes is this one. Will they understand all the terminology I use? Um, I'm trying to remember Brexit, yeah, you had to do a glossary in your report, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, we did. Right, thank you, yeah. So you know the idea of what we're talking about, but the terminology, okay? The way how you would normally get around it is if you're presenting, if you're using a term that you think that a lot of people would not understand, at, at that point where you're presenting, you, you would explain what it means, okay? You do not automatically assume that um, they understand what the term is. And the other thing is, and this is something that amazes me how straight white students don't do this, make sure you know what it means and make sure you know how to say the word. Because the amount of them, um, and, and I remember it was, it was some of the, it was the social care students a few years ago, and one girl stood up to do a, a presentation and it was on, basically, it, of all things, it was actually on viruses. Little did we know then. Eh? So anyway, she's she basically saying about this, she was talking about respiratory viruses. And she went, uh, it used to be, uh, I think she made, a, she made a comment, something like, uh, in the 1950s uh, in Scotland, there was a massive outbreak of pneumonia. The, the word she was trying to say actually was pneumonia. But because it's got a, she had a silent P at the beginning of it, she assumed that it wasn't silent and that was actually the word. So, it comes across as being very unprofessional if you do not know how to pronounce the word. Okay, so if you're doing a presentation, that's something you really should be quite careful with. Okay, decide what's going to be in your presentation. Make sure it is relevant. It's very, very easy when you're pulling everything together to go completely off uh, the, tra uh, the track or the, the, the remit you've been given and come away with something else. A bit. So be careful that it's all focused on the actual topic that you're looking at. And this is a quote from Benjamin Franklin. By failing to prepare, you're preparing to fail. And when it comes to presentations, that actually is probably, probably never, never to a word, a to a word was what was spoken. A lot, you should really take more time preparing than you actually do doing the presentation. But it's amazing how many people don't. Okay, here's the important thing when you're doing PowerPoint presentations. They are visual aids, therefore they should contain photos, um, slides, graphs, charts, anything that is relevant to what you're talking about. So therefore, if you, if you say for instance, your characteristic that you were looking at was disability, and you came across a chart that explained that um, certain disabilities in Scotland had, had increased by certain percentages over the last five years. You think that would be quite useful to use. Use it. If it, is, if it relates to the topic that you're covering, then there's no problem with using it at all. But remember, you have to explain, or you would have to explain when you're presenting a PowerPoint exactly why it's there. Okay, or if you've got backup evidence to go with what you're actually st stating in your PowerPoint, do exactly the same. Are we all okay with that? Yep. 
Yeah. Everybody else okay? Okay. Right, okay. Text in a PowerPoint. Not too much text. Okay. How many of you have, now I don't want names on this, but how many of you have been in for lectures and the lecturer puts a PowerPoint up on the board and it's all text? Have you ever came across that? Yeah. <laughs> that was quite emphatic, wasn't it? Okay. To be honest with you, that's not the way it should actually be done. In terms of doing a PowerPoint, my guideline for this would be you should not have any more than five statements on a slide. Now notice I'm saying, uh, notice I'm saying uh, statements. If you look on here, you've got one, two, three. Now obviously if you're going to put an image in at the bottom, then three is absolutely fine. Okay, but it's got to be clear so that first of all, that the people, the people that are looking at it can read it. Any more information relating to those points. See this speak off slide. That doesn't mean that you sit there and that doesn't mean that you, you sit there and read it directly off the PowerPoint. That's not how a presentation works. Apart from producing the PowerPoint, I also need you to produce notes. Now these would be notes, these basically would be notes that you would use if you were presenting the PowerPoint. Is that clear? So really what you should do is, for each slide that you produce in your PowerPoint, you should have, you should have additional notes for each one of these slides. You don't need to go into detail on it, but what it, what it will actually do is, it will give you, it will, act as a, it will act as a reminder of what you're actually going to talk about. So think of it as being keywords or prompts. Have any of you used cue cards before? Yeah. Presentations. It's the same kind of thing, really. I'm talking about. Okay. Um. You don't want to be. You don't want to be sitting there with a big bit of paper. Or standing there with a big bit of paper when you're doing it. Ideally, you would do it in cue cards if you're actively doing the thing. But what you need to do for me is, in a basically in a word document, just to, just basically say presentation notes, slide one. Put down what they would be, depending on what you put in your PowerPoint, and then carry on for each slide right down to the end. Is that clear? For everybody. Yeah. Right, so this has got that's got to be submitted as well as your actual PowerPoint. Okay? And it must they must make sense. Because what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to actually go through each PowerPoint and watch and watch it. And I'll be looking at your notes and making sure that it's relevant to what is actually on the PowerPoint slide. Everybody clear on that? Yep. Right, okay. Right, I mean, right, tell me, what do you think of this? Apart from the fact that it's all garbage and you can't make any sense, you can't make any sense, out of it, sense out of it. But in terms of the layout and the way it's been put on the slide, what do you think of that? It's way too much. And it's, it? way too, it's way too much and yeah. it's very, very strange. I mean, an acidonic acid affects athletes and authors and that. An abolism. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> it certainly is. It's a good one, isn't it? Um, arachidonic acid is actually the acid that's produced by spider venom. So why it would affect our parts, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, but as you can see, there's a lot of information on that slide and it is all very, very small text. Okay. Now, I'll be honest with you, if I saw that, and if I saw that in a, on a slide in, in a lecture, I'd be, I'd, I'd be off for walking out. Can you make any sense out of it? You, you, you actually will get, for those who have got to university, you will get some lecturers that work like this. And it's because they're very, very good researchers, but they're not that good at actually lecturing. Um, so you'll find it. As you go on in courses, this kind of thing happens, okay, but hopefully not at this college. Okay, what about that? What do you think of this one? In terms of its laid out, do you still think it's too cramped? There's too much things on the one slide, it could be... Uh-huh. Like Absolutely, I mean, how, how could you change it? Or what would you, what would you do to change it? 
you could break it up into different slides. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the one, fun, first thing I'm thinking of is, because I know what they're on about in terms of how it looks, what you say and how it sounds. Um, that's that's basically got to do, that, that, that also comes in regarding body language as well. It's splitting it up. But what I would have done, was I would have taken, see the light blue one would keep your audience interested. I would have moved that onto a separate slide. And then I would put the graph in the middle of that so you get the impact of it and maybe change the text at the, in the deep blue part of that a little bit so it was across the screen rather than chunks. But I think you would get a better impact with that rather than everything you put together. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, okay, so that'll give you an idea. It's very, very easy to put way too much on a slide. There's something else I would say about that, but I'll, I'll be really being picky, and that's the fact that I would never, ever have an, an image go right down to the bottom of the slide. I would always leave a very, very slight gap between um, the box and the end of the slide. But again, that's personal preference on me. It's more CD kick, man. Right, next up. Right, what about this? Not very professional. <laughs> not at all, is it? Definitely not. Not not, prof not professional at all. Um, and I think it's fair to say that whoever did this has went overdose on images. And and I'm sorry, but those little lies are starting to really annoy me. They've only been looking at this for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can go over the score, you can go too much on it. Okay, so... You've managed to sort out what you're going to put, basically what you're going to put on a slide. You've, you've, you've decided what you're going to do in terms of visuals that you're going to add in. Okay. Um, so for that, so basically for that, so for that reason, you've got it through. You've got to your final, you got to your final slides. You need a clear the signal close, close. If I don't know how many students I've had that are doing presentations, or they're setting one up. And it suddenly gets to the last slide and then bump, there's nothing. Okay, so if you're speaking, you're basically uh, to close the presentation, then basically you would use finally or in conclusion. Okay, but on the slide itself, what I would normally do is um, I would maybe put a little conclusion on my last slide, uh, on my second last slide, and on the final slide, I put those magic words. Does uh, any questions? Because automatically, what you're doing from there is you're open, then opening it up to basically to the audience to then ask questions if they were basically if they are required. Are we okay with that? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Now if you get to if we get to the point, I'll give you this just now because it's here. Um it was certainly something that might might help you. If you're asked a question by anybody when you're doing a presentation. Okay? Focus on the person that's asked the question. Don't suddenly look at somebody else at the other end of the room because they're doing something. Okay? And this is a standard one. If you don't know the answer, say, I'm sorry, I don't have that information at your hand, I'll get back to you. I'll, I'll, uh, if you want to leave your email, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay? Don't try and bluff your way through it because that is going to cause more problems. It's more professional if you just say, basically just say what's required and take it from there. I can understand why you might get a bit worrying if, if every single question you're saying, I'm sorry, but I don't have that information. Hopefully some of them you'll be able to answer. Okay, some way, uh, sometimes it's a good idea to repeat the question back after it's said, so, so you're clearly in understanding what the question is. Okay. Also allows you in terms of the effects you would normally have in your whole audience. Okay. There's nothing wrong with actually getting a question and after you've said what you're going to do, opening it up to the rest, to everybody else in the room to get their ideas on it. That's what we, that's what we mean by an open question. Okay, it's one that can be given to everybody to get their ideas on it. Um, but it's normally, if you were, basically, if this was a research class, open questions mean something entirely different. But it's not, it's communication. So for that, so basically for that reason, that's what we're talking about. You're opening it to everybody and getting their feedback on it as well before you move on. 
OK, things, things to do in advance. The most important thing you can do is prepare. If you are doing a five minute presentation, now be honest with me, if you're being asked to do a presentation, how many of you time yourself beforehand? I do. Well done, Megan. <laughs> you do. How often do you normally do it? Uh, maybe a couple of times before, and maybe. Yeah. Uh huh. It's. I mean, it it does make a difference because everybody speaks at a different rate, and also sometimes it's amazing how much you can get into five minutes without realising it. So it's always a good idea to time yourself beforehand so you've got an idea of where you are. It's better to have slightly too much than not enough. OK, but remember the vast majority of what you're going to say in your presentation. You will be relying on the prompts that you put in your notes as well as what as well as what is on screen. A couple other things just to say to you. Um, make, please make sure when you're doing a presentation that what is on the screen relates to what you're talking about. You may have spent a couple of hours making this up this fantastic presentation. It's not going to be any good if actually nobody sees it and only sees the front uh, is the first page. OK, so what some people do in their notes. Is they actually put that they actually put the words change slide at the bottom of the notes after once they get rid of once they get through the content for that particular slide. Then you do that as a prompt for to get into, so they remember to change it before they go on. The other thing to bear in mind is that um, don't hurry to change a slide. By all means, give it a little gap. It'll actually give it the, the, the other people that, are, the people that are listening to your presentation a little bit of time to sort of fully take in what you've been saying. OK, this is a biggie here. Face the group, do not read your slides. If I wanted you to read your slides, I would tell you. OK, you do not know how, uh, how off-putting it is to look at someone trying to do a presentation and they're not even standing in the right position. They're actually turned around and looking at the slide, normally blocking the slides for half, for, for half their audience. And they don't vary from that. They, they see exactly what's on it and then that's it. That's not what you want to do. If you were doing this, I would get if you were, if we're, if we're actually if we're actually going to do this, I will go over a, little, a few things like positioning, etc., and also the reasons why eye contact is important and how to do it. So I'll make I'll actually I'll actually use some of my psychology presentations for that because it covers it quite well. So we'll look at that if we need it. I don't think we're going to, but just in case. What makes a good speaker? Use your simple language and everything is organised. That's why you've got your notes as well as your presentation. Okay, say exactly what you mean. Okay, and, and there was used the correct vocabulary. One of the most common ones is a lot of students will say, oh, we did this. No, it didn't mean that that's not the correct word. You completed it. You finished it. You didn't, you did it. Okay, so remember to use the right vocabulary. Use accurate facts and support it with evidence. Now, that, again, that can be visual or it could be, say, a quote from someone. Again, you can put that up or basically your own screen to back it up. And try and, th try and think, if you can, how what you're doing is coming across to uh, the audience. I mean, one way you do it is, and a lot, <laughs> a lot of people don't like doing this, actually, is if they can get somebody to video them on the phone when they're practicing and then play it back. And you'll be shocked sometimes at the way you're acting during a presentation that you're not aware about, but it gives you a better idea of what how that is coming across to ever, basically to everybody that's watching it. Okay. Um, oh, I'm just I just did that because I saw that on the screen. Okay. So use your voice as a tool. Don't worry about the word parallel language. This basically means the pace that you use and the tone and the pitch of your voice. Make sure you speak clearly. Remember your body language again. If we are going to present this, I'll go over that with you. This is one that a lot of people use. Try to avoid ums and errs. 
you would be amazed how many people use that or do that and are not aware of it. When I told about making pauses between slides to, to give you a chance to, uh, time to change them, that's what we mean by strategic pause. It's meant to help you sort of compose yourself, but also help the people that are, wa that are watching. Be as confident as you can. It is better to be yourself and do a job to the best of your ability than try and do something that be someone or do something that you're not. And in terms of charisma, we've all got it. And again, the more the more presentations you would do, the more confidence we come across with that. Okay, if you want to watch it, something on charisma, there's a link for you. And again, as I see, you've got a copy of this PowerPoint, so it'll be there. So, mainly look at things, keep people interested, make sure you're covering the main ideas. And again, you won't have this because if you're not actually doing the presentation, but resist distractions. In other words, if someone's making a, a sort of laughing their head off about something at the top of the room, totally ignore them. It's probably, probably being ignored is what, exactly what they deserve. Okay. If you are anxious, you think I forget what to say, this is why you need to prepare notes. And it's not pages and pages of web printouts. Because if you try to do that, you will get confused because you're feeling anxious and it'll make you feel worse. Everybody would laugh at me. Not really, they'll be too worried about what they're going to do themselves. Okay. And if you think I'm going to be too nervous, nerves can be a good thing. Uh, do you know what, if you, I'm assuming it because you're, you're doing a legal course, you wouldn't have covered anything on, on basically how nerves can actually, actually make you perform better. Have any of you heard anything regarding that? No. No, right, okay. I'll quickly go over this then. Just quickly. Okay, if you think of Usain Bolt, I know he's retired now, but say basically when he was running, he had a present, he had a, 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 so a procedure that he used to go through before he raced. And this can actually apply to all sportsmen. And what happens is, if they, they aim to be slightly on edge before they actually, for football, go out in the park or start a race, because what happens is minor, uh, basically some nerves will actually, actually activate and increases the senses in your body and makes you perform better. It makes you more alert. And it can, it, it, it can, it certainly can, it can increase your your vision. It can make you see actually things a lot more sharper than you might do normally. Okay, and put, usually once you've started, that goes away, and then you're absolutely fine. So a little bit of nerves is really, really good. Obviously, too much isn't, but being being on edge a little bit is a good thing. Okay. Preparation is the key word on this, if you actually, if you actually feel uh, in, embarrassed about it. If you don't know what to talk about, research it, that's what your notes are for. Okay, and if you don't know how to do a presentation, practice it. It's the only way you're going to learn. I'll tell you a story about a student I had all many years ago, must be about 20 years ago now, and um, it was a, a full class where I had to, had to do presentations, and he was really, really nervous. The idea of presenting in, uh, in, in, in front of maybe even two or three people really, really put him on edge and he just basically fell to pieces. So what I did was I got everybody else out of the room and got them relaxed and then just basically said to him, okay, if you're going ahead to do this, what kind of information would you be putting forward? And he was fine in a one to one and he was telling me on that. But what I actually did was, uh, what I actually did was, I gradually um, let another couple of people into the room, and the reason for that is, in order for someone to, to basically to, to pass their assessment, there has to be a minimum amount of people in the room. So there was another a couple of these, I got a couple of his, his, his friends to come back in, sat down. He was fine talking to them and talking to me, and I just gradually said without them knowing, okay, what about this and what about that? I mean, so if you put it all together, what would you do? And he went ahead and he actually did the presentation without realising it. And at the end, I just said to him, well, that's fine, that's a pass. And he looked at me totally stunned. And he went, 
what do you mean? I said, well, what I got you to do was, was relax so that you knew that basically you, you were feeling more confident about the information you were going to put forward. And that's a, and that was absolutely fine and it worked well. Ironically, um, that student now works, <laughs> now, is now working in one of the housing organisations in Glasgow and every day he gives presentations. And I remember going to, uh, going to a meeting about, I think it was about three years ago, and his name was Brian. And Brian was the person that was chairing the meeting and he went out to do a presentation. And at the end, I said, I actually went up to him and I said, see you, we can't kind of shut you up now. And then I remember when you couldn't say two words and he burst out laughing. So a lot of it is, is self-conceived in terms of how you think it's going to come across. If you get, get to the position where you where you're relaxed and practice does that, things these things are normally a lot better. Okay. Um, Again, you can have a look at the are you ready for a checklist in terms of just to make sure you've got everything that you wanted in the presentation. Don't just do it, save it and think that's great, that's finished. My advice would be put it away for 24 hours and go back and look at it again. You might come across mistakes that you weren't aware of. Okay, anybody get any questions on what we've covered? Yeah, see um, like the information you're putting on the PowerPoints, is that like solely up to us? That's solely, like, up, to, solely up to you. The first thing you need to do, Morgan, is, is you need to put, you need to decide what protected characteristic you're going to do. Okay? Okay. Right, yeah. what's going to happen then is your first bit, you'll have a title page, which, which, which would be something like analysis, uh, uh, an analysis of a, a, one protected characteristic contained in the Qualities Act 2010. That might be a title. Okay? Your next page, we talk about the fact that the Equalities Act has nine characteristics and the one under investigation in this presentation would be, and then tell us what it is. Okay, so you're keeping it nice and simple. Okay. okay? Then going from there, moving, moving on to the next bit, then start, by this time you should, but the time you get to the point, pulling it all together, you should have looked at the research and saw what you've done, okay? And then put it in, put information in, again, put it in statements and don't put any more than five single line statements on a page. If you've got maybe two or three with a little bit more information, you can do that, but don't, any more than that, again, it's going to look too crowded. So is it sort of any information on that protected characteristic that I choose? It, it, you choose, but bear in mind, it's got to relate to your notes and it's got to make sense. Okay. Okay, so I would think about, I would think about, how, I would sit down first and think, how many slides am I going to need? Or how many slides do I think I'm going to need? And then put it out, you can use, there's no, there's no, uh, I'm not going to turn and say it must have seven slides, it must have ten. It's as many as you need, just make it comfortable. So that if you were saying it, you would be able to handle it all right. Okay. Having said that, if you, if you, come, out, if you come away with 30 odd slides, there'd be a wee bit of concern, but you know what I mean? Um, don't think, oh god, I need to go all the 10 slides. You don't. Okay? Okay. Right. Anybody else get anything they want to ask? We'll take that as a no then. Okay, so. Any, for any questions before we finish up? Now is the time to, uh, basically, now is the time to ask about anything to do with Assessment three, or even assessment two, again, it will be capital for something. Oh, I should ask that when Alan talked about it earlier. Then now's your chance before we finish up. When's the due date for the assessment three? Assessment three due date? Um, get it done as quickly as you can. Okay. Okay. Um, if I, uh, that way, if I get word back saying, saying no, they don't, need, they don't actually need to do their presentations, if I've got all your evidence, then I can tell you and actually, and then that's your finished comms. Okay. Okay. Um, you're better to be prepared. You've got plenty of. I mean, you've got plenty of time. I mean, to be honest with you, the actual due date for the report is not is not due to next week. You know, so you can take a fortnight over this easy. If you needed it, just take as much time as you need to do a good job. Okay, that okay. makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else get any questions? Okay, if any of you that have not been able to speak on this, um, 
and you, you, you suddenly think, oh, wait a minute, I'm not quite sure about that, then by all means, email me and I'll get back to you on it as quickly as I can. Um, our, our recording of this presentation will be on YouTube probably within about an hour, all going well. Um, so you'll be able to access it and I'll have your class and the data, basically, and, the, uh, uh, and today's date on it so you'll know. Um, therefore, you, are you all, do you all know how to access the YouTube lectures? Yeah. You do, right. Is everybody else okay with that? Do you know how to do it? And silence was the, was the reply. Okay, fair enough. I assume you do then. Okay, but I'll again, it will allow you to go back and look at things that we've, did, that we've talked about if you're not sure. And I will attach a, a copy of the presentation or basically with the email that I'll send to you after this is complete. Has anybody got anything here, anything that they would like to ask before we finish? Can I get a yes or a no, please, from someone? No, I'm all good. Right, thank you. Thanks very much. Okay, right, thanks for attending today. I'll get that sorted out. Any individual questions, you can get back to me, okay? Uh, uh, thanks for attending and bye for now. Thank you.